Cinderella by George Calderon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Dramatis Personae. Mrs. Inquest, read by Ruth Golding. Hedda, her daughter, a distinguished, fashionable person, read by Tricia G. Hilda, her stepdaughter, read by Helen Taylor. Madame Helseth, her servant, read by Madeira. Aunt Judy, her sister, read by Maria Casper. Mopsy Man, Aunt Judy's dog, read by Clara Snyder. Stockfish, read by M.B. Tesman, his son, Acts 1 and 2, read by David Barnes. And for Act 3, read by Ian King. A Demon, read by I see Jumbo. A Fairy, read by Lucy Perry. A Hired Waiter, read by Iswa. An Italian Waiter, read by Laurie Ann Walden. A German Waiter, read by Robert Steiner. A Chamberlain, read by James Curran. Stage directions read by David Lawrence. End of Dramatis Personae. Act One of Cinderella by George Calderon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Prologue. The theatrical manager comes before the curtain and introduces the play with a short speech, in which he says that he has endeavored to please both generations, providing Ibsen for the young and pantomime for the old. The result is a pantomime as Ibsen would have written it, if only it had occurred to him to write one. Cinderella, Act One, Scene One, Before a Drop Scene, Red Light and a Gong. Enter a demon. What ho, oh, I am the spirit of the night, and to do evil is my chief delight. When I see people happy, I am sad. Nothing seems good to me unless it's bad. Good girls like Cinderella drive me wild. She's never naughty, that's why I hate the child. And now that she's emerging from her teens, I'll give her no peace, I'll give her beans. White light and a gong. Enter a fairy. Tremble, saucy knave! Behold, the enemy you feared of old. Oh, law, my word, that girl again! De toute le fée, je suis la reine. She's a undesirable immigrant. No harm shall come to Cinderella from you or any other fella. I and my fairies will protect her. They're the police. She's the inspector. Where are the others? Where's the ballet? They can't come on the stage today, so allay. Why not? Oh, Madame Brown forgot to send their things, so we're obliged to keep them in the wings. Oh, to the fairies singing their song. Dear little fairies singing all wrong. If you can't hear a song very plain, when these fellows will sing it again. Oh, spare me, spare me. What have I done to deserve this? Oh, to the fairies singing their song. Little if you can't hear our song very plain, when it is finished, we'll sing it again. Enough. Belay there. It is time to give the kids their pantomime. Exeunt Demon and Fairy Scene 2 The drop scene is raised, revealing an Ibsen interior. Mrs. Inquest sits at a table and knits. She rings a bell. Enter Madame Helseth. Come hither, Madame Helseth, and sit down by me. But I've the scuttles to fill. No matter, come hither. I want to talk. Soliloquies are not allowed in modern plays. It is necessary that I should have a confidant. I'll take my sewing. I am a lady of middle age and prepossessing aspect. My name is not Mrs. Twanke, it is Mrs. Inquest. A nice, cheerful sort of name with a Scandinavian ring about it. I do nothing all day but knit, knit, knit. It has some sort of symbolical meaning. I never open a book, 
we none of us ever do. There are no books in the house except what we write ourselves. We sit and brood over our sorrows. We are a peculiar family, all of us. We are a thing apart. Our names all begin with an H. There's Hilda and Hedda and Helseth. And Hinquest? We are all fond of pickles and all our uncles drink. "'and we all have green eyes of a peculiar shade.' Oh, "'Good gracious, Mrs. Inquest, I've heard all this a dozen times before.' "'Very likely, but those good people over there haven't. "'The name of this house is Rosmer's Holm. "'It is a gloomy place, situated on a bleak and cheerless heath overlooking the fjord.' We have no friends, no neighbours. There is no human habitation within miles and miles, except the gasworks. And here we all live, side by side, cheek by jowl, but miles apart in soul, Hilda and Hedda and I. And we all detest each other heartily. Hedda is mad. Hilda is mad. We are all more or less mad. I must go and be about my work. Nay, hear me out. But indeed, I must go. You shall hear me out. Forcing her back into her chair. Am I mistress here or not? Listen, and I will tell you the story of my life. I have a past behind me. Ah, this becomes interesting. Do you know an idea of that sort he crossed my mind already once or twice? When I was very young, I was married to a man with whom I had no single point of sympathy. He loved me, oh, so passionately. But it was only for my beauty, my charm, my wit. I was not a human being to him, not a creature with a free, wild will. I was only a chattel, a doll. Even then, I wanted to live my own life. But he wouldn't so much as let me eat macaroons. Ah, so you are Nora. Yes, I am that unhappy woman. I know all about you. You ran away. Ran away? Oh, that was nothing. I soon came back again. When at last my child was born... Miss Hedda? Yes. But you had several already. Oh, they didn't count. We turned them out. They were dolls, too. We wanted to start quite afresh. Fancy. When Hedda was born, I determined to get rid of my husband. His constant presence irked me. His perpetual smiles and caresses seemed to insult my humanity. What did you do? I drowned him in the mill rates. Oh, dearie, dearie me, you drowned him? Yes, I had my undaunted freeborn will at that time. I pushed him in. That was when the white horse began to haunt Rasmussen. Ah, yes, the white horse. I enjoyed the luxury of widowhood for many years. Then I determined, for some very complicated reasons, to marry again. Oh, he was an angel. I met him up at the baths. He had a daughter already. Miss Hilda? Yes, her name was Hilda. Ah, that was a happy marriage. Yes, those are the worst, the happy marriages. You always agreed on everything. Yes, I always insisted on that. But 
but i was bored mortally bored all this happened as usual you will understand together with a lot of other complicated circumstances fifteen or twenty years before the play opens well i could stand it no longer i had to get rid of him too he was a miserable undersized little beast what did you kill him too no he was good enough to take that trouble off my hands he hanged himself in the apple orchard i drove him to it i drove him mad inexorably mad i hinted i said here is a rope there is the apple orchard but that was cruel of you it was tactless oh of course blame me blame me a woman is always in the wrong and who's that all were there no other children oh yes fifteen others what became of them i killed them lucky children they enjoy the peace and luxury of death then at last i began to live deep down in the bottom of my soul these secrets are more than i can bear but all this is nothing it is only the prelude you have not heard the worst oh lord have you more confessions to make was there some other crime the worst thing was what came after oh let me know the worst no i will keep it for some wet afternoon it is all in here giving her a portfolio here is the key i want you to take care of it for me but you must on no account look inside then why do you give it me Shh, it may be useful in the last act and now you know why it is that a kind of gloom weighs over the household the white horse yes yes hedda is clever and writes books hilda has a mean crawling spirit she loves drudgery she does the housework while you loaf around gibbering about white horses and things i never laugh hilda never laughs nobody ever laughs at rosmer's home <laughs> except miss hedda yes hedda laughs at times but it is a funereal sort of laugh a sardonic anchovic sort of laugh it always means death to somebody enter hedda give me my pistols there's a visitor coming up the drive exit with pistols lord that miss hedda the things she does do pistol shots without help help more pistol shots enter hedda laughing <laughs> what is the matter my child it is only tessman coming to pay a call i nearly got him but he dodged it is over drain inspector tesman who is engaged to be married to my daughter hedda i know i know enter tesman in mittens carrying a parcel you dodged you mean beast you dodged do you know hedda i wish you were a little more gentle and winning in your ways you mustn't mind hedda tesman she overflows with the joy of life why have you come here i came to show you something very wonderful you will never guess what it is aunt jemima's wedding present i had never hoped for anything so good from her i don't care i don't want to see following her about 
But you must, Hedda. You're one of the family now. I don't want to see. I don't want to see. Uncle Krogstad used to wear them. You never saw such a big pair. Heavens, what is he going to show us? Producing them from his parcel. A pair of galoshes. What do you think? A pair of old galoshes. Fancy. Old galoshes. Think of that, Hedda. Yes, yes. Only think, Hedda. I am thinking. But that is not the most important thing that I have to tell you. No, there is something more. Whatever can it be? I cannot come and see you now so often. You can't? This valley has become terrible to me. Why? Because I have found my father. Your father? You have a father? A long-lost father. He lives up here at the gasworks under an assumed name. You can hear his footstep. A steady footstep heard pacing up and down. Up and down, up and down. Up and down, up and down. For eight long years on the top of the gas meter. Are you afraid of your father, then? Yes, inscrutably afraid. It is one of the old habits of childhood. But that is not all. What more is there? He has grown tired of his solitude at last. Today he has determined to come down, to go out into society again. He is coming here. At the window. See, he is descending the gas meter. Slowly, step by step, he clambers down the ironwork pillars. He has a stick in his hand. I must be off. Be kind to him. After all, he is my father. You mustn't mind if he's a little strange in his manner. He cometh hitherwards. I must have a shot at him. No, don't. Not on his first visit. He might not understand. It might make him shy of coming again. Here's Hilda. Bully her instead. Goodbye. I must fly. I love him dearly, but my life is not worth a minute's purchase if he finds me here. Exit Tesman. Enter Hilda in green spectacles with a cardboard shade over her eyes. Come here, come here, you little coward, you mean-spirited wretch. Why do you wear those goggles and that idiotic shade over your eyes? Oh, please, Hedda, you know that I have to for my work. Your work? The glare of the kitchen fire is too much for me without them. Oh, please forgive me, Hedda, I've got such weak eyes. You wretched little household drudge, you're afraid of me, you're afraid of me. Oh, please don't hurt me. And I can't stand your hair. Rumpling it. Ugh, it's all fluffy like a Regent Street chicken. Oh, please. Oh, please. I think I must burn it off after all. Oh, no, please not. I'll do anything you tell me. Enter Madame Helseth, ushering in Stockfish with straw in his hair. Mr. Stockfish. She hands his card to Mrs. Inquest. So glad, I'm sure. Mph. To Madame Helseth. One of my former husbands. Standing beside the table, like Mrs. Borkman. Why have you come here, Stockfish? Can you not forget? Can you not forgive? I never forgive. I never forget. After eight years of solitude, I could bear it no longer. I waited and waited up there, expecting a deputation, but none came. This is not life. I must have company. 
company stockfish did i have company when as a girl of thirty-five leave us mamma your presence irks me exit mrs inquest sit down tell us the story of your life once i was a builder i used to build houses with high towers to them how did you know that yes they had high towers to them who is this girl take no notice of her she's the between i built houses on a new principle but they always tumbled down the houses that i built burying housemaids and clockwork mice in the ruins clockwork mice ah oh, there's some symbolism in that you may be sure it is a pity only that they tumbled down but that wasn't the worst it was what happened after they tumbled down that was the worst what was that i began to mistrust myself to mistrust yourself ah that is the worst sort of mistrust yes i began to doubt whether i had any great mission any special message to the world in the architectural line others began to doubt it too i began to be known as the plaster builder i resolved to begin a new life i resolved to build no more houses you were quite right houses are so irrelevant i said to myself i will build gas works instead ah oh, to light the town that is the great need of the local situation no that is where i had been wrong all my life i had been trying to serve mankind i had been trying to do something useful useful how i hate that mean ugly word i said i will no longer do what is useful i will no longer build little humdrum houses for little humdrum people to live in i will build gas works out in some wild desolate spot far from all human habitation among the peaks and the great waste places where they can never never be of any use to anybody at all oh that was noble of you stockfish do you know what i am i am an idealist whatever i do has a symbolical meaning and the gas that is symbolical too i cast off my family i changed my name why do you not understand i wanted to start quite afresh besides i owed money in the town you were quite right all that sort of thing is so irrelevant the soulless toil of the wage earner has always aroused a sickening aversion in me that is why i cast off my son tesman tesman you know him oh slightly ahem you'd better go and get on with the housework i think madame helseth exit madame helseth he insisted on working he worked nearly six hours a day and lived on what he earned shame he haunted me with the vision of the humdrum citizen the good bourgeois i said epatant le and i apatted him he wanted to be respectable i kicked him out i want none of that i should think not indeed serve him jolly well right he is a drudge down with him besides as overdrain inspector to the stockholm city council he had condemned several of the houses that i built and so for eight long years i have been up in this valley making gas that no one will ever burn that no one will ever burn how beautiful the solitude up there at the gas works is something awful you can't think you could cut it with a knife what are you quite alone Shh, no i am not quite alone is there some other person no it is not a person Shh, it's a great secret i keep it in the box room 
you shall see it when you come up oh what can it be this evening you will see at last i have grown sick of this life even gas-making palls in the end this morning i said to myself i will go out into society again i will marry marry one of us i am engaged but i can easily break it off i have determined to give a party i'm going to break the ice i invite you to my party this evening yes just this evening oh how ripping nonsense you're not asked of course not i only want the eligible ladies of the neighborhood just the county and what amusements will there be at the party we will play paper games how beautiful long dreary paper games i'll go and ask mamma we shall have to titivate a bit change our clothes and all that oh clothes are so irrelevant how i wish i could go too you indeed ugh i think i shall have to burn your hair off after all oh please not hedda spare me spare me i am weak and feeble exit hedda oh sir i want to ask a favour of you a favour you mayn't i come to your party too a tame little beast like you no indeed i want no mouse faces about me no lapdog muzzles no turtle bills give me tiger snouts and ravening wolf jowls oh dear oh dear why am i such a miserable teeny weeny little mizzler i am enormously fetched by you stockfish there is something very taking about you pa scrub enter mrs inquest and hedda in hooded cloaks to mrs inquest what are you coming to stockfish during fifteen years i wrestled with another woman once for your soul and now i mean to have it oh sophonisba how will all this end exit stockfish to hilda have the milk hot when we come back and don't forget to feed the cat and by the by don't let anybody in while we're away who is likely to come no one ever comes here my sister has been seen in the hills your godmother aunt judy aunt judy my godmother why i never even heard of her she's a bad lot they call her the rat wife heaven grant that you may never meet her <laughs> why what was that the white horse Ugh, you wait till I get back. Excellent, Mrs. Inquest and Hedda. Heaven grant they may not meet the white horse on the way. All alone, all alone, all alone. Why, you've got me, dearie. Hilda sings a song expressing solitude and dejection. And now I suppose I shall have to spend the evening scrubbing those pots and pans how i hate pots and pans are we downhearted no and i'm hungry too they gave me nothing to eat lord love a duck young lady i'll toss you up a bit of a pancake for your supper in no time i tell you what we'll do we'll read hedda's book together that'll be a lark what is miss hedda writing a book didn't you know yes on deportment for young ladies fancy that ought to be something quite new a bell rings hark there's the bell who can it be i'll go and see yes do exit madame helseth reading my the things hedda does say if mamma only knew enter madame helseth it's an elderly woman downstairs who wants to see you who is she she's not much to look at she seems what you might call a bit crazed balmy so to speak on the crumpet and that's a fact ah well she won't be out of place here 
ask her to come up no, i did i told her to follow me but she said she preferred coming her own way a gong music and a red light enter aunt judy through a trap door she has a hooked nose and wears a welch witch costume with tall hat and cap frill well here we are again pardon seductive lady you don't remember me i don't think i ever had the pleasure why eh? i'm your aunt judy aunt judy the lady i wasn't to admit under any circumstances come in come in i'm your godmother i know your fairy godmother what are you a fairy yes i'm a troll singing and dancing fall it all lol i'm a troll i'm a troll fall it all lay to je gay to je gay fall it all lee you'll never catch me fall it all lol it all lido <laughs> my elegant mermaid what do you think of that what an engaging old lady you are are you always as gay as that rather i sing and dance all day and all night allegro con brio is my lay and is it true you're a bad lot ah they told you that <laughs> fidonk that's their spitefulness my unspeakable jam puff because i went my own way without listening to them donner wetter ma chere i was never cut out to be a myrmidon of morality i'm an emancipe that's what i am i've always lived my own life comprenez what are corkscrews made for <clears throat> i say no more aha you've been brought up by hand you have hit it gracious lady i've signed the pledge a dozen times <laughs> but bless you aunt judy still remains the woman she always was since then they call me the rat wife <laughs> It's the jolliest thing in the world that any one can be. Are you so fond of rats, then? Fond of them? <laughs> I've got to be fond of them, whether I like it or not. I see rats, rats, rats everywhere. Big rats, little rats, pink rats with purple eyes. Look at them, rats and pumpkins they're all over the floor and white mice too <gasps> jumping up on a chair i don't see no mice ah you wait till you've signed the pledge they come creepy crawly up in the beds all night long they plump into the milk cans they go pittering pattering all over the floor back Backwards and forwards and up and down nibbling and gnawing and creeping and crawling all the rats and the blessed little rat children and i go about following and following after them i and my lovely little dog mopsy man what have you got a dog too a dog of course i have a real dog i should think so indeed he drinks whiskey too real whiskey yes scotch real mopsy man mopsy man enter mopsy man ah you should see him dance why what's this a pair of clogs four of them a pair for me and a pair for you mopsy man oh let's have a clog dance and judy and mopsy man dance <sighs> basta i'm blown so the rest of the family have gone out to a party and left you all alone at home yes i overheard all that they said i was under the window i said to myself what how capisco mine adamen i'll have my revenge i'll put some stiffening into that tame little ash cat hilda and twist old inquest's tail i've come to revolutionize you 
you've got to stand up and be a man me oh no i'm a little soft early victorian thing you can't stiffen me what are you contented with your position here oh no to be a drudge a cinder minx no i crave for great things great enormous irrelevant things ha <laughs> ha you want to live your own life yes that's it i want to live my own life if only i knew how to begin odds ratikins that's easy every woman begins with the same thing what's that a man a man oh my how ripping a little soft whiskery man to crunch up in your dainty fingerkins oh wouldn't i like it running about oh where's a man where's a man there's stockfish to begin with stockfish you can practice on him for a start go up to the party at the gasworks but hedda would burn my hair off hedda indeed who's afraid of hedda disguise yourself but how am i to disguise myself i have it wash i will and fig yourself up in some of hedda's clothes right -o, i will i will get myself up in the height of fashion and judy and mopsy man get out clothes hilda washes and dresses there what do you think of that be free be free don't let others prescribe your life for you don't be a myrmidon of morality any longer go it you cripple paint the little homestead red i will i'm damned if i don't come you're beginning to swear that's better jumping across the stage like a kangaroo in a hobble skirt women must be free untrammeled we have been tied up too long i'm going to be a new woman a bold-faced jig but don't you think they'll recognize me not they it isn't much of a disguise outwardly but you're disguised mentally that's the important thing and what am i to do next mm, something symbolic something to show your new-found freedom i know hedda said she would burn off my hair well i'll tell you what i'll burn hedda's book her manuscript on deportment for young ladies what a luck she burned loveborg's book you know serve her right the cat that'll learn her burning the manuscript now i'm burning your child hedda i am burning your child what oh she bumps this is prime fun why wasn't i a suffragette before now let's be off but how are we to get there i can't walk it's raining enter madame helseth law miss hilda you do look a swell well i never miss hedda's feet you too we're going to the party but you can't walk not in them shoes now for some of those rats and mice and pumpkins of yours aunt judy oh but they're only imaginary rats and mice they won't take you anywhere why here's the very thing just at the door a pair of horses white horses no no a pair of galoshes that'll do i'll go in them it's frightfully thrilling exeunt and judy mopsy man and hilda trailing her big galoshes enter the fairy behold me cinderella in your hour of need what time the others to the party speed would you not like to go as well too late she's gone oh what a sell Hark to the fairies singing their song dear little fairies singing all wrong if you can hear a song very plain Curtain. End of Act One.
Act Two of Cinderella by George Calderon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Cinderella, Act Two, Scene One. At the gasworks, the scene is only a few feet deep. Behind the back cloth there is a great din of hammering and occasionally a blow on the cloth itself. <clears throat> uh, stockfish alone. At home he is an ordinary, peevish, nervous householder. Oh dear, oh dear. I wish I had never undertaken to give a party. If I had known all the preparations that it would involve, this fearful noise going on all day, nowhere to sit down or anything and as soon as i get a little privacy someone is sure to come intruding enter tessman disguised as a waiter with a false nose and a long beard another waiter with him small and jewish both wear big white cotton gloves now what do you want who on earth are you tessman and waiter stepping absurdly together and keeping exact time in their words and gestures we are, are the, the first, first and second, second hired waiters. waiters. Ah, the men from Gunter's. Now, you know I'm expecting a small party here tonight. Oh, dear, oh, dear, what is all that noise behind? It, it is, is the, the stage, stage carpenters, carpenters preparing, preparing the, the big scene, scene the, the big set scene. scene. I do wish they could be a little quieter about it. Well, as I say, I am expecting a small party. He is interrupted by a blow on the back cloth near his head. There, that one nearly got me. Relling and Morvik will be here, Nigel Playfair, little Asliskin and the old crew, some Chamberlains, a thin-haired gentleman, a flabby gentleman, a short-sighted gentleman, courtiers, peasants, soldiers, servants, etc. Oh, for heaven's sake, go and tell those people behind to be a little bit quieter. Ah, the audience won't hear a thing I have to say. Master, we hearken and obey. Salam. Exit, Tessman and Waiter. Stockfish endeavors to make a speech to the audience, but is drowned out by the noise. Enter Mrs. Inquest and Hedda. Hello, what's this? You didn't say anything about clothes, so we thought it best to come in fancy dress. I have come in classical costume. I am Aspasia. My costume is symbolical. I am joy. They all sit and yawn. How shall we amuse ourselves? Let us look at albums of photographs of cathedrals and places of interest that we have never visited. You promised to play paper games. Paper games? Long, dreary paper games. Let us play at words. We will take some long word. Some long, dreary word. Alexi Morkigati Conologilness. Alexi Morkigardi And what do we do then? We make little words out of it. Words of not less than eight letters. Beginning in X. How long shall we have? Forty minutes. They sit with pencils and paper. After a moment, Mrs. Inquest produces a big flute and plays the Dead March in Saul. Ugh. 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 We are having an excessively jolly evening. It might best be described as an orgy. How many words have you? None. None? I also have none. With my flute in my hand and you two at my side, I can be happy. Let us play at telegrams. Let us play at prehistoric animals in M. I do not care what game we play. All are equally dreary. Let us penetrate the blackest depths of gloom. 
Hilda is heard singing without. I am free, I am free, I am free. What is that? It is seldom that anyone sings near Rosmer's home. Or near the gas works. Even the birds only make a sort of croaking noise. Enter Hilda in galoshes. I am free, I am free, I am free. He, he. No more life in the prison for me. I am free as a flea. I am free, I am free, I am free. He, he, he. Looking at her through long handled eyeglasses. Who can this be? We haven't a notion who this can be. What an enchanting creature. A little bourgeois. No style. Rather rococo. My, what a picnic. Are you playing with the waxworks? Chamber of Horrors, sixpence extra. What astonishing persiflage. What a pert little minx. Bad form, I call it, to be so familiar. Are you alive? Yes, we are living deep down. We are going it inside. Do you call this living? Ha! You don't know what life is. Life is to leap and dance in the woods, to catch skylarks with the hands, to chase the roebuck and leap down the rocks. You can't do that at the gas works. We shall have to play that game some other day. Aha! Uh -huh. So that's the sort you are, one of the alive lot. We'll go hunting, you and I, right up there in the mountains, in the mists and clouds, near the bathing establishment. You're a huntress, aren't you? Yes, a huntress of men. A pretty wit, i' faith. I'll show you my dogs. You shall see them gulp down great bones, huge beef bones covered with flesh and gore. Ah, give me gore. That's life. Come, let's all be jolly. Let's climb down off our perch a bit. We're too intense. It's all very well for the children, but we must think of the old folk too. Remember that this is a pantomime. All right, what shall we do? Let's have a song and dance. Right you are. I'm game. To Tessman and Waiter. Just keep things going till we're ready. Shall we do a short turn, governor? Yes. Exunt, Stockfish, and Hilda. No mind, whatever you do, let your entertainment be refined. Madam, Madam of, of course. course. Something that the children can thoroughly understand. Something really Drury Laneian. I should suggest, for instance, that you both pretend you're broker's men and one of you is drunk and toasts a herring over a candle. You see? Something amusing but refined. Exit Mrs. Inquest. To Hedda. Shh! Not a word! You know me? You are Bernard Shaw. No! I'm your affianced bride! I'm Tessman of the D'Urbervilles. Introducing the waiter. This is Jude the Obscure. One must earn one's living somehow. Exit Hedda. Something amusing but refined. I know, we'll do the ticket business. Enter Aunt Judy and Mopsy Man. Now, now then, then, what, what do, you do you want here? here? Oh, please, Mr. Gentleman, we want to go to the party. Very, Very well, well, then. Where's, where's your, your ticket? ticket? We haven't got no ticket. You, you can't, can't come, come in without, without a ticket. ticket. The, the governor, governor said he saw my leg off if I let anybody in without, without a ticket. ticket. We must disguise ourselves. What as? I know. Ibsen characters. They disguise themselves, Mopsy Man in bathing drawers, and Judy as a bathing woman. Please, Mr. Gentleman, this is little Eyolf, and I am the lady from the sea. I'm just going to give him a dip. Very well, where's, where's your, your tickets, ticket, then? then? Tesman and Waiter turn them out. They re-enter, newly disguised. Who, Who are, are you? you? We are pillars of society. 
Where's, Where's your, your ticket, ticket then? then? They turn them out. They re-enter in sheets. We are ghosts. Ah! They pass and turn. Don't be so frightened. We are not real ghosts. Not, not real, real ghosts? ghosts? What, what are, are you then? then? We're the pretenders. Aunt Judy and Mopsyman throw their sheets over the others and run away. Where's, Where's your, your ticket? ticket? Where's your, your ticket? ticket? Scene two. A deeper scene with palace staircase and crowd of guests painted at the back. The middle of this painting is a practicable double door, but the doors are not painted as doors. Parts of the staircase and crowd swing back when they are opened. Stockfish shakes hands and converses with the painted guests, and the waiters offer them refreshments. Stockfish, Mrs. Inquest, Hedda, and Hilda discovered. Well, here we all are, then. And what is this? Referring to a catalogue. This is the Pageant of Empire, Gallery Number 17, Meeting of Colonial Premiers. Not bad for gasworks, eh? This is the boardroom, the room where the directors come when they're bored. Come, let us be sportive and merry. Let us have a song and dance. How are you? Are you feeling pretty fit? Fit, yes, fit for anything. I am fit to be made a peer. The bandmaster taps his desk. Mrs. Inquest clears her throat. To Hilda. You hear? Tap, tap, tap. She's going to sing. I knew how it would be if we took her out to a party. The coffee goes to her head at once. Oh, poor old Mr. Hasquith is very hard worked, I fear. He's trying to find five hundred men that's fit to be made appear. Well, he wouldn't look long if he heard this song for someone to make a knob. There's me and there's him and there's Bill and there's Jim is ready to touch the job. He's, He's trying, trying to, to find five hundred men that's fit to be made appear. What a woman, oh, you know, you know that's fit to be made up here. Oh, up, hurry up, hurry up, way high and made up here. The day this girl is made a hurl, oh my, won't I feel queer. I'll walk in the row with my elbow so when I am made up here. You won't catch me at the ABC, nor lock out, then no fear. I'll do myself well at the Carlton Hotel when I am made up here. He's, He's trying to, to fight 500 men that's fit to be made up here. What a woman, oh, you know, you know that's fit to be made up here. Up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, way high and made up here. I won't eat no more sausages, nor drink no ginger beer. I'll wet my gum with the finest mum when I am made up here. He must mend his ways in the coming days, must Mr Lloyd George, that's clear. I'll not let him rob the riches of the knob when I am made up here. He's, He's trying to, to find five hundred men that's fit to, to be made, made up here. What a woman, oh, oh, you know, you know. Having finished the song, Mrs. Inquest takes the stage. Talking of the House of Lords always reminds me of that dear old ditty, The Court. The bandmaster taps his desk. Heavens! She's going to sing again. It was a corpse lay on a bier beneath the silvery moon. There, there, that's enough. You've had your song. You must make way for someone else now. What? So I have got to make room now? To make room for the new generation? For little chits of girls? No! I will never make room. I will never retire. I will go on singing for ever and ever. 
they hustle her it was a corpse lay on a bier. she is bundled out the music plays a dance what is this this is our principal ballet it is a grand pageant of all nations the dresses alone cost fifty thousand pounds hush they come ballet of four hired waiters tesman dances a la russe and says gop gop du schenkemeyer the jew wears three hats an italian waiter says caramba a german waiter carrying three glass mugs in either hand exclaims pots thousand donnerwetter to tesman come hither dandy dee i would quaff a goblet of brown october tesman serves him thank you do not thank me it is my simple duty i am paid to do it leaning his elbow on tesman's shoulder and looking at hilda tell me dandini who is yon virgil of peerless beauty i know not your majesty but fain would i right gladly meet with her anon in the tw twilight the bandmaster taps nay not that for heaven's sake ring off oh spare me spare me do not kneel to me old man do you not know me i am tesman your long-lost son he takes off his beard and knows you what have you turned up again and this is hedda my little hedda we are engaged you engaged you don't mean to say that you ever had the courage to propose to her yes last tuesday i took the uh, hedda uh, there were many that sought her hand i was jealous i said hedda i wish to be the only cock on your foul roost and what did she say she said buk, 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 ah! bless you my children beshrew him ever this varlet foils my plans i must be revenged come let us amuse ourselves as we did of yore in the old stockholm days with a little knockabout business you remember only too well they put on small straw hats and do a knockabout business in which stockfish is beaten worse and now i will keep the promise that i made you i will show you the great secret the mystery of the box room ah yes the thing that isn't a person i must put on my uniform first i like to do everything in style exit what is the mystery of the box room oh it's a symbol <laughs> like that enter stockfish suddenly in a cocked hat standing in a napoleon attitude i am the rightful heir to the throne of france i am napoleon returned to his own the island of elba was too small for me i add no elba room he was in the volunteers you know and now for the secret the great secret Shh. he goes out on tiptoe and opens the folding doors at the back Shh is she awake i can't quite tell yet she's in her hutch i told you you should see her and so you shall exit into box room what has he got in there poor old man you must humour him it's an idea of his it's all the pleasure that he has now since he gave up taking real outdoor exercise he goes in for big game shooting in the box room what does he shoot that's the secret it's a guinea pig a guinea pig a real wild guinea pig but why a guinea pig oh he was swindled out of some money once by a company director he creeps around among the boxes and trunks he pretends they're trunks of trees and shoots at it with a pop-gun enter stockfish alarmed i say there's something rather queer about that guinea pig to-day his pop-gun goes off and frightens him she looks so fierce 
she seems so much bigger than usual and uncommonly lively a gong mopsy man jumps in from the box room and aunt judy behind laughing <laughs> Here we are again. Did little Mopsy Man give you a bit of a turn, Herr Militor? Aha! The forest avenges itself with a vengeance. We always like coming in in these funny ways, if we can. Who is this? This is Aunt Judy. She's not respectable. She's been in jail, you know. In jail? Well, well, that's a bond of union. So have I. Enter Mrs. Inquest and Madame Helseth. Why, here's Madame Helseth, too. How very mixed Norwegian society is becoming. Song and dance. Mrs. Inquest and Judy, Hedda and Madame Helseth. We're hips and hips and rickety rackety gals. True blood, blue blood, stand and any and swells. We're the girls, dear girls, take us all in the lump. We're rather rough and we're up to snuff and we're all of us off our chum. Yes, all of us, all of us, all of us, all of us, all of us off our chum. Exit Hilda. Come, Aunt Judy, let's have a drink together. It's a long time since we met. No, thank you. N n nothing for me. I've signed the pledge. What again? What does it matter? Pledges are so irrelevant. Come, a little cold punch. Better not press her, my dear. Do have a glass. No, thank you. Aha! You dare not. You preach freedom to others, but you dare not be free yourself. Didn't you see the way they smiled when you said no? Come, be secure, be confident of yourself. Drinking five or six glasses. Well, well, here goes then. Did you see that? She wolfed the lot, my dear. Wolf the bally show. Enter demon and fairy, meeting. Oh, there's someone I know at last. Oh, how de do, how de do. Don't you know many people here? Not a soul. Upon my word, queer set of folk they've got together. Wonder where they rake em up. I feel rather out of it. May I have the pleasure of taking you in to supper? Exunt arm in arm. All have gone but stockfish. Enter Hilda in cloak and galoshes. At last, I find you alone. You're not going. Alas, poor man, it were better for you that I should. I must be back by twelve. But it's only eight. You've got four hours? All too little for what I have to say. This is a moment that I have waited for for years. Who are you, mysterious stranger? I am a woman who has found herself at last. I am the apostle of freedom. Freedom for everyone to be themselves. No social conventions. No duties, nothing but to do and to be. You are still a slave, I see, a slave of little things. You love your furniture, your glasses. I will free you from them. She goes round with a hammer, breaking everything. There, that's the sort of hairpin I am. Nine o'clock. Goodness, how time flies when you're enjoying yourself. Do you feel it beginning? Feel what? Love. No, I feel only dread. That's right. That's how it should be. I want you to loathe me and to dread me. That is what binds people together. For you are mine, mine, mine. Embracing him. Unhand me, wench. You are strangling me. Will you return my passion? I will do anything if you will only let me go. Do you loathe and love me? I will care for you with all the tenderness of a middle-aged man. I want no tenderness. I want no quiet. I want to be loved as your dogs love those great bloody bones they swallow whole. 
oh how lovely that must be what would you like to swallow big bones whole no but to be swallowed whole ten o'clock i must hasten i must get to the point listen to me stockfish when first i saw the gasworks i knew that it was all over with me it was so tremendously thrilling i couldn't believe there was anybody in the world could have built such great enormous gasworks ever since i was born i love you love you love you but we have never met before yes don't you remember long long ago that was up at the bathing establishment do you not remember it lives in my memory as if it were but yesterday i was only three weeks old then you picked me out of my cradle and kissed me passionately it isn't true i always detested babies it is true you kissed me here did i since that moment our seals are sold for one another i have no recollection but that isn't what mattered that wasn't the important thing the thing that mattered was what came after i know that phrase it is always what came after that matters you took the coral necklace off my neck and hid it in your pocket fancy and i said to myself for i couldn't talk out loud then i said that is the man for me a real man a man who is master of his own soul and not bound down by little petty conventions and rules of etiquette i don't remember a word of all this aside nor do i eleven o'clock my time is nearly out come tell me who you are no that you must never learn nor now nor never more that must always remain a secret between us a beautiful secret symbolical of the relation between the two sexes tell me your address never tell me at least your telephone number no no i am bewildered i do not know what i ought to do do you not know listen we two are the only waking creatures here do you not understand me no i do not understand you getting on the table the champagne is on the table i do not see any champagne there stood the champagne but he tasted it not ah now at last i understand he runs after her twelve strikes stop stop there's twelve striking come here you little witch i've got to get back one kiss one kiss she boxes his ears and runs away he follows her out and returns with a galosh she's gone she's gone but in her flight she dropped this precious relic kissing it oh yum 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 enter tessman stockfish hides the galosh see father three chamberlains are playing blind man's buff with madam helseth what do i care tush i would be alone enter madam helseth and three chamberlains ah it isn't always the oldest wine that is the best she's coming out at our expense oh fie oh fie what raillery enter mrs inquest and hedda and aunt judy i am bored to death with insipid conversation and heartless amusement i am stifled with the taint of marsh vapours oh if only i could find the address of the alcohol refraining society i would send in my resignation you're not going i am homesick for the mighty nothingness farewell old horse good night respected sir i'll see you out no thank you i'll go my own road Exit Aunt Judy through the ceiling. Please excuse her. She's always been a little eccentric. And now it's time that you all went. 
I want to be alone. He kisses the galosh. Well, after a broad hint like that. We'd better say good night. Good night. Good night. Good good night. night. May you may have, you have no, no dreams. dreams. Let, Let us pray, pray that, that we may, may none, none of us have any dreams. dreams. Tessman, Mrs. Inquest, and the waiter stand as a comic American unaccompanied trio. Tessman in a little straw hat, waiter in a Newgate fringe. Go put my nighty by the fire and make my groom will haunt, and go and get the warming pan to warm my little cot. My little cot to warm, to warm, my little cot. Come, that's a laugh. Why don't you go? Enter Fairy. She chips forward and takes the stage. And now that all the rest have had their say, come fairy bright eyes whom mortals all obey, behold the triumph of mine. Oh, you won't go, won't you? Well then, I'll turn off the gas. Darkness. Screaming, laughter, and pistol shots. <laughs> Curtain. End of Act Two. Act Three of Cinderella by George Calderon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The same scene as in Act One, Scene Two. Stockfish, in a garland of leaves, sits with Hedda and Mrs. Inquest at a small round table, on which stands a bottle of champagne. Madame Helseth stands by them. Did you sleep well after it? I slept a little towards morning. I felt an oppressive burden here. I saw crocodiles and hippopotamuses all night dancing and making faces at me. I saw white horses. Have a little more champagne. Enter Helda in spectacles and eye shade with a tray of pies. Ah, here are some pies that Hedda has made on purpose for you, over Gaspervere Stockfish. I love to see him with the vine leaves in his hair. My aunt is dead, Eilert is dead, Ekdal is dead, Aslaxen is dead, the governess of the gardener's children is dead, everyone is dead. You are in low spirits, Stockfish. The cloth is dirty, the wine is flat, the pies are bad, absolutely uneatable. One of them goes off, like a jack-in-the-box. Whatever I touch, I make a mess of. Have some more wine? She pours wine all over the table. I am bored and tired of life. My head is thirsty. Bring more champagne. Bring a magnum. Madame Helseth puts a jeroboam on the table. I want my wee girlie to be happy. She shan't go racking her brains. Never a gleam of brightness to lighten our home. It isn't a home, it's a cage. It's a menagerie. I cannot rest until I have found out who that girl was who came last night. That princess. She wasn't a princess. Well, she had on a princess skirt. There she stood, on the table, as it might be that bottle of champagne. I practically had only to draw the cork. Who can it have been? We cannot guess. Helda sings without. I am free, I am free, I am free. There, I hear her voice. He runs off and returns. No, there's nobody there. Only that little mouse-jowled slut of a slavey. There was I, there was the table, and there she stood. Helda sings above. No more love for me there i'll swear that was her voice he runs up and returns no there's nobody there only that pulp-headed abigail upstairs dusting the hayloft well as i was saying there we stood i was where that chair is and she was helda sings below i am free as a flea 
I am free, I am free, I am free. This time I'm sure. He looks down through a trap door. No, not a soul. Nobody but the she surf down in the cellar drawing the beer. Well, for the present I must be off. However, our friendship mustn't end like this. I will come and see you again tomorrow. I will come and see you again this afternoon. I will come and see you two or three times every day. Oh, if I could but find her again. She left a gumshoe behind her. It might prove a clue. I'll let you know. A loud knocking at the front door. Who on earth can that be? Are you expecting anyone? No, no one. There isn't a soul but ourselves up this mountain, except the hired waiters. And they've gone back to town again. Go and see who it is, Madam Helseth. Well, I must be off. Don't forget about the galosh. No, no. Exit Stockfish. Demon without. Oh, I beg your pardon, Governor. Not at all, not at all. Enter Fairy and Demon. I hope you'll excuse the liberty. We are sorry to interrupt the course of the pantomime. What has happened? What's the matter? We wanted to ask you a question. The fact is, we were both at Mr. Stockfish's party last night and couldn't help overhearing a good deal of the conversation around us. We were both profoundly astonished. What sort of conversation? What about? The moral aspect, lady. The moral aspect? What does he mean, mother? The point of view seems to have changed so much since our young days. It used to be so hazy. In fact, we were fairly confused by all we heard, and what we want to know is, what is right and what is wrong? To Hedda. What a comical old-fashioned fair, my dear. Quite a couple of drolleries. Looking at them through her long-handled glasses. Such people don't exist nowadays. My dear children, these arbitrary distinctions of right and wrong have quite gone out. They have been abolished. Well, well I never. never. You, you don't, don't say, say so. In place of them, we have nowadays the expression of our personality. Crikey! It is our duty to express our personality in our lives just as much as ever we can. And if in doing so we break the criminal law, well, so much the worse for the criminal law. But look here, lady. In that case, I am just as good, just as moral as she is. More so, in all probability, because you've got more snap in you, more expression of your personality. My eye! Do you hear that, Titania? And I've always looked on myself as such a bad lot. My poor fellow, you've been reproaching yourself quite unnecessarily. Yes, but look here, I love evil. Quite right. So do we all. It was made to be loved. Yes, but I do evil. You try to, but you never do any harm, really. Your intentions are always baffled. Haven't you noticed that? Yeah, she foils me every time. Evil intentions never come to anything. It's only good intentions that ever do any harm. But, bless my soul, why should two innocents like you worry your heads over these matters? The fact is, lady, it isn't only curiosity, prying into things that's too high for us like. It's, well, we've met so often in the way of business all these four or five thousand years. Since the creation of the world, you know. That we're... We've come to rather like one another. In fact, he wants to marry me. I've got a little home ready for her in the garden suburb. But I felt it my duty to refuse him, as he's such a very, very bad man. Then in that case it is you who are the devil, because you're preventing him from expressing his personality. Then it's really me that ought to wear the horns? Yes, and he ought to have a halo. The demon puts on a halo and poses like a saint. How do I look, Titty? The fairy puts on his horns. They laugh heartily. You must have a little something in the servants' hall before you go. Mrs. Inquest leads them out. Hedda looks at them through her glasses. 
the fairy lowers her horns at hedda and bellows wickedly <laughs> excellent all but hedda enter hilda so there you are miss now i'm going to give you what for give me what for hedda surely you wouldn't bang your little hilda i suppose you think we didn't know you at the party last night i suppose you think you were very fine and smart in my clothes eh i didn't think you'd mind hedda who gave you leave to wear my ninon ballet skirt and plum-coloured pelerine who gave you leave to splash one of my slippers all over with mud oh what are you going to do to me hedda producing a pistol i am going to shoot you oh not shoot me hedda yes shoot you are you sure you mean to shoot me hedda quite sure come on then two can play at that game producing a gun what ho what you you have the courage i have courage for this or for anything now i have awakened from the dead i have found myself at last oh joy hooray embracing her at last you are one of us yes i'm a real rickety rackety ibsen girl at last oh hilda what a wonderful thing it is at last to have a sister that one can love but what about my lover hilda tesman no stockfish you will not steal him from me hilda no hedda i will not steal him from you hedda we will share him fairly between us hedda how can we do that hilda wait and see hedda enter madame helseth dragging mrs inquest tesman follows what is this spare me spare me do not shame me before my children what i did i did with a good purpose oh what has she done don't be harsh with her madam helseth children your mother is a fraud she has been leading a double life she has been deceiving us no no do not expose me i must it is my simple duty all these years your mother has been living on the reputation of a mysterious past full of fearful crimes yes yes we respect her for it know then that your respect is founded on a lie i have examined this portfolio i forbade you to open it i looked for murder arson robbery forgery the usual things what do i find nothing but blameless innocence oh horror a pious and well-spent youth oh shame you are mother i hardly like to tell you the things that woman has done the things she has been let us know the worst a sunday school teacher oh, oh. president of the gothenburg dorcas society oh, oh organizing secretary for the diocese and mother's treat oh. oh and treasurer of the orphan curate's sustentation fund this, this is, is too, too awful. awful i can never face my children again from henceforth mother we declare to you solemnly that your authority in this house is at an end you must take a back seat I never did believe much in those dark stories of fifteen or twenty years ago. I and Hilda, at least, have real crimes that we can boast of. Hilda? No, not my innocent Hilda. If I have committed no crimes yet, mother, I am about to do so on a stupendous scale. My reign is over. There is nothing left for me what to sit and gibber in the chimney corner now my salts my salts her salts has it come to this then our mother has weak nerves there's someone ringing a visitor please please compose yourself excellent mrs inquest hedda and hilda do you know at times i almost regret my promise to marry hedda whatever made you fall in love with her i cannot understand you never have a moment's peace 
It'll be another doll's house, or more like a Punch and Judy show in which you'll be the baby. Do you know, Madam Helseth, in spite of the disparity of our years, I have half a mind to kiss you. God bless me. Whatever put such an idea into your head? I sometimes think that you and I are the only two sane people here, although the author evidently meant to guy us. Tessman kisses Madame Helseth. Mwah. There, there. It's very annoying. I've searched and searched. Have you lost something, Mr. Tessman? I could have sworn I left a pair of galoshes here yesterday, and now there is only one of them. Excellent Tessman and Madame Helseth. Enter Stockfish, Mrs. Inquest, Hedda, and Hilda. Here is the galosh that she left behind her. Now, if you've got such a thing as a bloodhound about you... Perhaps it's got the name of the maker inside. That might be a clue. Rabbits. Where does he live, I wonder? I know, in the borough. What if it should belong to someone in this house? That is hardly likely. We look so different by candlelight. Well, I don't care. I swear that I will marry the rightful owner of this galosh whoever it be tesman runs on father father it is mine it is your own tessie wessies i am yours yours for ever oh confound this jack and apes wherever i turn i find him in my road take that you oaf take that he kicks him out let me try it on you indeed come here stockfish what is it backfish let me murmur in your ear murmur away there stood the champagne but he tasted it not you hilda takes off her spectacles and eyeshade go all of you i must be alone with this girl exeunt all but hilda and stockfish so it was you me 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 oh if you knew the hungry hanker that i feel for you for a man that could do such a delightful asinine thing as build those great clumping gasworks on such a desolate mountainside then if i love you and you love me there is only one thing to be done we must marry marry stockfish what do you take me for a heroine of a second-rate english comedy what we meet on the lofty plane of affinity, aspiration, high towers, and big gasworks, and then you drag us down to this? To marriage? How humiliating! How irrelevant! There, there, I didn't mean to be harsh. But surely my own boy knows that such a solution is impossible. I have higher things than that for you. Only tell me what they are, Hilda. Listen. I am about to take hold of life with a strong hand. I am going to ask a big thing of you. Whatever you ask. I want no commonplace contentment. I want something rare, something with a sting and an ache in it. Bliss with a groan in it. Oh, what is it? What is it? I will give it you. I have a wild, uncontrollable desire to see you suffer suffer horribly unendurably finish well what you have begun so well get on these gasworks that you have built and blow yourself up not that not that only that i would do anything to please you hilda but this oh i am afraid i am afraid do you mean to tell me that you my hero are afraid to blow yourself up on gasworks that you yourself have built oh hilda you know that i would gladly do anything in reason to amuse and entertain you but this is too much how if i refuse then i shall shoot you in the stomach where loveborg shot himself what an awful choice to have to make this then is what love means scandinavian love but don't look downcast, Stockfish. This is the only way that I can have you utterly, utterly to myself. When you are blown to bits, then at last I can know for certain that you will never be anybody else's. For my sake, you must do it gladly. 
take this wreath i had prepared it for this moment you knew that i should come something told me it was made ready for you to wear at your own funeral a mortel a pretty idea i want you to do it beautifully with the vine leaves in your hair beautifully stockfish promise me that farewell hilda inquest farewell half done stockfish this is the end stockfish goes out and returns but supposing the gas won't catch fire hilda it, it, it may turn out to be quite incombustible you know fancy stockfish there'll be a sort of sporting interest in that bye exit stockfish this is frightfully thrilling she dances a hornpipe enter hedda why is stockfish going about from room to room with a wreath in his hand asking everybody to lend him a crowbar and a flaming torch stockfish has gone to kill himself to kill himself fancy why is stockfish going to kill himself i made him you made him i did he is to ascend to the highest peak of the gasworks and blow himself up hilda i adore you you have the true viking spirit enter mrs inquest and madame helseth mamma stockfish is going to kill himself he is going to turn away from the banquet of life and blow himself up in the gasworks ha oh, at last a bold deed there is beauty in this we shall have a good view from this window why doesn't he hurry up dear lord miss hilda how could you do such a cruel thing he bored me you will never have any peace of soul again after this who cares peace of soul what a humiliating idea who wants peace of soul it sounds like snacks of fish threepence doesn't it this then is what the white horse meant what's that white horse she's always talking about oh it's a public house down the road here at window see see there he goes to his death now he ascends the little path now he clambers slowly up the ironwork with the crowbar in his teeth and the wreath about his neck now he has arrived he looks round he wipes his brow with a red bandana handkerchief now he is the only cock on the fowl roost at last now he plunges the crowbar into the gas meter now he sets the torch to the orifice they imitate a rocket look up high and clap their hands my word what, what, a, what beauty. a beauty well there's an end of him he's blown himself up he's blown himself up all sing and dance enter tessman weeping blown up gone to glory i shall never never see them again them what's them it's the little things that hurt one most the things that some people would look on as almost nothing come tesman what things do you mean he went up in my galoshes your galoshes my beautiful big galoshes that aunt jemima gave me waving a handkerchief and dancing my plaster builder my galoshes my plaster builder my galoshes curtain end of cinderella by george calderon